All right, welcome back into Cleveland Browns Daily here on a Friday. A privilege to be joined by our number one draft pick, Jedrick Wills, here on a Friday. And, and Jedrick, let, let's just start with, uh, with where, where you have to start. And, and it's been a, a trying week, um, it, and, and it's something that's not going to go away anytime soon. How have you handled it? How have you observed it? Um, what are some of the thoughts that have run through your mind this week? Um, so, I mean, it's, it's been a numerous of things. Um, it's kind of like you, like you said. A wild week for sure. Something that, you know, that we wish wasn't still here today. Um, a problem that, that's been going on for 400 years or more. Um, it's just something that you kind of you kind of feel for everybody else that is happening to. Um, thanking God and being blessed that it's not your family. But it's just something that we have to realize that people go through day in and day out. Um, people's families who, who this happened to. Um, the loved ones who are lost. And, um, I mean, it's just something that's sad um, for it to still be happening. And at the end of the day, um, we got to kind of take into account that there's families out there who are scared to death of what's going on right now. And um, I'm just here to support. I'm here to, to say my say what I have to say and pay my dues uh, to those families, just kind of keep them in my heart, um, just wish for the better. You've been very active on social media talking about this. I've seen lots of retweets and, and your opinions, obviously, very strong. It's a very personal thing. Bo and I obviously can't understand your situation. We can't understand a lot of the players on the Browns team situation, and we don't try to. What we can try to do is be empathetic and sympathetic. But what I would ask you is, what would you want us to know as we try to go forward as agents of change where there needs to be change here in this country? What is it that you would want us to know? I mean, I feel like at the end of the day, um, I come from both sides of the family. I'm 50% black, 50% white. Um, and I've had support from both sides of the family. There's never been any problems with that um, in my world. And um, luckily for me, I haven't came across any of those encounters. Um, but I mean, for, for people who, who say like they can never be in our shoes or never understand, but they're with us, we just wanna let them know that their support means everything. And um, the, the base of people that they have who support them um, is gonna do nothing but follow their footsteps if they support us. So I feel like um, things along that line, the support, um, people speaking out and et cetera, just have to come from both sides. And I mean, at the end of the day, um, it's not going to get fixed until people kind of bring that into light and kind of recognize what's going on instead of hiding from it and being blind to the, to the situation. Jedrick, is it, um, is it encouraging to see how outspoken so many of your peers have been, uh, an incredibly emotional video we saw from some of the best players in the national football league, two of our guys in it, Odell and Jarvis, obviously, uh, is it encouraging to see, from my perspective, there is, seems to be some progress there of guys being not at all afraid to speak out and the NFL team supporting that. And that, that's, I know you weren't in the league four or five years ago, but that's, that's a bit of a different change. Most definitely. And um, I feel like that's going to do nothing but, but make the situation better. Um, those guys using their platforms, it's amazing. I know Jarvis is very, very, very um, hurt by the situation. Um, he spoke out to us in the team meeting on Thursday. Um, about his about his feelings towards this thing, um, Odell as well. Um, so I feel like those guys using their platform is going to do nothing but help the situation. Um, they have such a large fan base with people who support them and their beliefs. And um, with everybody on their team, it's going to do, it's going to do nothing but make it a bigger a bigger um, surface. You mentioned that team meeting, and we heard about Jarvis's words. Also, head coach Kevin Stefanski's in that one. How have you felt in terms of support from this organization, your peers, your coaches, general manager Andrew Barry uh, on top? And Andrew Barry actually wrote an email to our organization today. I don't know if it went to the players as well. That was incredibly powerful. And it does seem like the Cleveland Browns are going to do everything they can to help you. Are you feeling that as a player? Most definitely. Um, they've done nothing but put out their words and um, been very supportive of the situation. Um, I know Coach Stefanski had a lot of things to say about it, all positive. Um, he came with the whole team and just let us know that they were going to have our backs through it all. Um, there's players on the team who um, actually have been like in these situations, players who are scared from where they come from, and they got their backs 100%. Um, and I feel like that's what we need for every team, um, for every person out here right now. Jedrick, as we, as we step and, and go to the next step of this thing in, in terms of, of returning to football and all of those things, things you you guys you don't know any other way but normally you'd have had rookie minicamp and you would have had uh otas and we'd be in minicamp now um all of this has been done virtually at this point but it is good news coming out coach Stefanski back in the facility today and so so there's some momentum going there uh, what has this been like for you as a rookie to have this your entire professional career to this point which normally would have been here in Berea uh done virtually it's definitely something that's new um it's something that I've never been a part of before. I mean, it was exciting, you know, just kind of getting the flow of things. 
Um, it would have been way better to actually be there and participate in the rookie mini camp, be in practice, be in meetings with those guys. But at the end of the day, we have to take it for a granted assault. You know, I mean, it is what it is. So, so really just trying to learn as much as I can, trying to get better on my own and actually be ready for whenever they call us back in the building. I know you've been talking about the transition from right tackle to left tackle and you want it to be second nature. And one of the things the coaches have talked about is that your ability to do the drill, send film back to them, get feedback on it. So how is that kind of coming along? We know Joe Thomas wants to help you as well as he's dominating the Titan games, but how's all of that coming along for you? It's been going really well. Um, I've got feedback from Coach Stefanski, uh, from Coach Callahan, from Joe T. All been positive. The transition is going to be nothing but you know, really just me, myself, uh, trying to get better without them being at my hand right now. Um, so really it's just getting those things in day in and day out, sending video film over, taking feedback and actually putting it to use. So at the end of the day, I mean, it's really all on me until we can kind of get things rolling. Jedrick, what – it's you call him Joe T. We call him the Hoff because he'll be a first ballot Hall of Famer when he goes in, but I like that Joe T as well. Um, what, did you, what did you know of Joe as a player? It's been well documented how much he loved you in the process. He was emphatic on our show every time he was on, how much he wanted us to draft you. And so he, the celebration was there. But then this has become a real relationship as well. Um, what were you aware of Joe as a player before all of this happened? And, and what has that relationship been like that, that you're, you're now building with Joe? Right. So I know him as probably one of the best left tackles to ever play the game. Um, he's been somebody that you can't you can't ignore when you're watching football. Like if you if you turn the Browns game, your eyes go straight to the offensive line. And with him, who who used to play left tackle, um, he was really good. Uh, most consecutive snaps, very few sacks, and like you said, definitely a future Hall of Famer. Um, but really, just a great offensive lineman and a great mentor for me. Um, I'm excited to see what I can bring to the future and kind of fill in the issues, but with him being by my side and giving me feedback and pointers to help my game, it's been nothing but positive. And I know you decided to forge your own legacy, wear your own number, but what did it mean to you to have him offer you number 73? Right. So when I got drafted, they kind of got to get everything going, you know, for us to get ready for the season, jersey numbers, jerseys made, locker, et cetera. Um, and I, Chris Hubbard has 74, so I asked him, and he had some ties to it that I had to respect. So I was like, no problem. Um, 73 was my number in high school. So I was like, maybe I'll, I'll go back to that. Um, asked Joe T, he was cool with it. But as respect to, to him and um, the legacy of his number, Coach Defense, he didn't agree with it. So I didn't want to try to push any boundaries. Um, and just kind of went with my own number, which is 71. Um, no, I don't really have any ties to that number. It's a little league number, um, something that I fell back on. It didn't look too bad when I got the graphic made, so I just I just rolled with it. It does yeah, look good. It looked good. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's what it is. I'm, I'm excited. Yeah, we're, we're excited to get you here. And um, you think about this team in general, and you think about not only the addition of yourself, but Jack Conklin, obviously, as well, on that offensive line. And, and we know how good this offensive line is, the middle. Um, this would typically be a great time for bonding uh, amongst that room and with Bill Callahan at the top of it. You guys would be thick as thieves, and we see you guys around the facility. It doesn't it seem like, Nate, we see more of the offensive line in the facility than anybody else by a wide margin. They're always. And always, always hanging out right. together. Always together. Always playing shuffleboard. Yeah, like they're yeah. always together. It's a really tight-knit group. Anyway, um, how have you been able to create those bonds virtually versus what it would have been like in the building? Um, so, I mean, it's pretty much the same thing without being together. Uh, we, we have a whole bunch of meetings throughout the week um, for about a couple hours, and I mean, we're learning for the most part, but you kind of get a feel for everybody. Um, we host player-only meetings and kind of get to voice our word and opinions. I mean, everybody's really cool. Um, it's a really great group of guys. And um, I feel like once we actually get to Cleveland and be able to get to work together, the bond will do nothing but get stronger. So at the end of the day, I mean, the old line room is a sacred room anyway, so we already got that bond before we even step foot <laughs> in the facility. So it is what it is. What's it like been in that room and in these meetings where you got J.C. Treader, who's the head of the NFLPA, obviously a very accomplished player in his own right, Joel Batonio, multiple-time Pro Bowler, Jack, as we talked about, first-team All-Pro in this league. Uh, have you picked yeah. up any nuggets from guys who have done it at a high level for a while already in that room? Right. Well, you can, you can definitely feel their knowledge in the room. Um, those guys are on top of it. Um, they ask a lot of questions, and I do nothing but learn from them. Um, it's a lot of Coach Callahan trying to get us um, – into the office, get us into the scheme of things. But at the end of the day, like you said, really great players who have a lot of experience and um, are going to do nothing but make us better at the offensive line position. What has it been like uh, having a guy like Bill Callahan be your, uh, your, oh, in charge of your room? I mean, widely regarded as if not the best, one of the best offensive line coaches in the history of football. 
Um, it's amazing. Very well respected, like you said, probably one of the best in football. Um, he's made transition from guys from right tackle to left tackle, um, kind of like he's working on with me right now with Trent Williams, Tyron Smith. And he's been on great offensive lines. Um, we watched a lot of stuff from the Redskins where he was previously and their film. And you can you can just see the the way that the offensive line plays and the intent they play with. And with him coaching us and being the head of the offensive line room, I feel like it's going to do the same thing for us. And he's just a nice guy, too. I mean, we yeah. had him and he ended up – we ended up doing a 30-minute interview with him. He couldn't be a yeah. nicer guy, very knowledgeable, but just – Seems like very much a good person and somebody who deeply, he said the most important thing is to have my players know that I truly care about them. And I would imagine that probably comes across early. Definitely. And we can, I feel like we can all vouch for that and uh, definitely feel that in the room. I wanted to go back real quick to, uh, to Joe Thomas because we've had him on and he's done these dissertations on offensive line play on our show that are just <laughs> incredible. incredible. The 40 things that he would check off before every snap. And then the other thing to talk about was his notebooks and the notebooks that he would take, not only in the meetings, but also every day in practice. He would try something, a different angle of his spine and write down how that worked out. Have you guys talked about these notebooks? And, and is that something that, you know, is that something you like to do on your own prior to Joe? Or is that something you're, you're learning and talking to him? But just the diligence, you think about the gifts that he has, but it's that right. diligence, which is why he's that uh, first ballot Hall of Famer. Well, to play online um, is definitely something that you have to have within your traits um, to be able to take notes and do your due diligence like that within the meeting room. And um, it's something that I'll have to ask him about. I have not heard about those stories yet, but uh, even even the things that he gives me on pointers with, um, like if I send him a video of me doing something, it'll be the smallest thing that you'll never even think about. But he'll correct it and send me some pointers back and I'll do it and it'll be like, wow, like just that. Very, very small detail, and I mean, but that's how it is when you play in the trenches at O-line. Um, the difference between the top and the bottom is very small, so it comes within those very small details. Joe, Joe Thomas sending you – it's like Michelangelo sending you <laughs> your art class. What a like resource. Exactly. Right what a resource to have. Exactly. That, that's awesome, man. Um, you know, that, that how, how about in terms of learning scheme and stuff? What, what has that been like in terms of the offense? And are you – just take us through that a little bit because we have no idea what this is looking like. Like, as you're getting uh, – you're having these Zoom meetings and stuff, then are you going out to a field and walking through what your job would be on it? Or, or what's that like for you? Um, well, it's a, it's a variation of things. So, within, like, learning the offense, learning the schemes, um, I feel like playing Alabama helped me a lot because you'll see some things and – the calls will be similar or the schemes will be similar. So you already have a good idea of what you're learning. Um, but it's really just a whole lot of mental reps as of right now. Um, just going back and watching the film, making sure that you study and know all the calls. And um, I mean, it's a work in progress. I'm still trying to still trying to learn the whole offense as of right now. Um, but it's just doing as much as that we can do virtually. So if I have any questions, you kind of send them a text or go back through and actually learn from the film, learn from other people's film, uh, going through the playbook sheet, call sheet, just all those things all together. It's a whole bunch of stuff that you kind of have to really, like I said, take initiative on your own to do. I know he hasn't been right next to you physically, but he will be when you guys get out there on the line. That's Joel Batonio. And his rookie season came into the league, learned this same scheme under Kyle Shanahan. How is that? Has that helped at all? And I know you haven't gotten to be right next to him yet, which will it'll right. happen on the field. But how has that been knowing that you have a veteran who's accomplished and who also knows this offense very well right next to you? It's going to be great. Um, I know that he'll have my back. Um, whatever question I need, I'm sure I can ask him. Um, but he asks a lot of questions in the media room, um, things that, like, we won't even think about because he's played for so long. And it's just – it's nice to see a vet like that still learning. And um, for him to put his two cents forward and um, actually, like, share his knowledge and ask questions, it's just great to see. And um, every time you ask something, you learn something. You learn something new. So, I mean, it, it goes. All right. We just have to take a pause right here and get into something that I'm sure many people think is probably the most important question in this interview once we got past all the seriousness. Uh, the chain. The chain. <laughs> Let's the chain. talk about it. The grizzly bear, uh, the pendant. What what is it? What what is going on here? I mean, by the way, uh, it is the talk of it is the talk of the locker room. We haven't talked to a single player who hasn't been able to stop <laughs> talking about it since then. So well, tell us the story. How'd this come about? What's going on there? Because it looks spectacular. All uh, right, so the, the story behind it um, was when me and my buddy, uh, Cesar Ruiz, who now plays for the New Orleans Saints, uh -huh. who drafted. Um, me and him back in high school, we've been friends since, like, freshman year of high school. And uh, we just started, like, a little thing called, like, Grizzly season for football season. So, like, the big guy, the receivers and all the DBs, they got all their no-fly zone and all that stuff. So our thing was Grizzly season, um, kind of like Grizzly Bears. But I actually have a brand that I'm working on right now with my agent um, called Grizzly season. So we'll be dropping merchandise on that soon. But Awesome. 
Grizzly season, it's the it's the bear. Like that's that's the logo for the for for me for him, um, the logo for my brand. And um, the chain was just something that I've wanted. Like you see, you'll be in college and high school, you'll see everybody get their special pieces. So I was like, why not get mine? Um, but the idea I had for it was a grizzly bear. I haven't seen anybody with it um, besides T Grizzly. And he got like he actually stole my idea, so I'm gonna have to talk to him about that one day. <laughs> he got like half his face and half um, half a, um, a grizzly, and it was pretty cool. Um, but I just thought I'd get my own, um, start my own brand, start my own piece, and I just took the logo that I was going to use and um, put it into a pendant in the chain. Jedrick, I'll, I grew up in Montana, and we have actually actual grizzly bears there, uh, and I've seen them a lot. <laughs> and what I would tell you to do is is the one of the coolest images in, re, in related to grizzly bears are the print that they leave on the ground, their paw right. print. Uh, yeah, that – Go Google that image because that might be something you want to integrate because it's one of the coolest images. Yeah. The paw is terrifying when you see it. Yes, most definitely. It's dope. And um, I was yeah. just thinking about that, but I don't know if y'all know who Isaiah Bugs is. Um, he played at Alabama two years ago. Okay. And he went to the NFL, and that was his chain. That was his piece. Was the paw? Um, he, got, he, got, he got like, yeah, he got the, he got the, like the paw, the paw print. So What's going on with print. those? What gems are the eyes? Uh, so they're emeralds. Um, they're very, very beautiful. Um, they kind of just stick out. It's something that just kind of like poke the piece out. At first, I had like uh, red claws and like all that, but I just kind of want to keep it basic. And then um, my jeweler actually left the eyes, just kind of make it pop a little bit, and make it blend in. It's awesome. So that was you had your guy. You had a guy already that you knew you had in mind that you wanted to do this. And and obviously, I would say uh, he hit it out of the park. It's most stunning. definitely. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's Jedrick, awesome. it, this is awesome getting a chance to talk to you, buddy. We can't wait to see you in person. Can't wait to get you up here. Thank you so much for your time today, pal. Most definitely. Thank you all.